Hello, dear students. Let us continue with what we started in the last class. We were deriving the integrated rate equations for zero order reactions and the first order reactions. For zero order reactions, we have already derived. And we stopped here in the last class for first order reaction to obtain this integrated rate equation. We consider a general reaction in which a reactant R turns into product P. Now, according to our definition, rate can be written as the change in concentration of the reactant by change in time. And if we write the rate equation for this reaction, then rate will be equal to the rate constant K into concentration of the reactant R raised to power one since it is a first order reaction. So from these two equations, we get dr, the change in concentration of the reactant by change in time, pt, equal to kr. Power is one, so we get a one mole of r again. On rearranging this, we will get dr, by R equal to K D T. Now the negative sign we can put on the right side here. So dr by R equal to minus K D T. Now if we integrate this on both sides, integrating on both sides, integration of dr by R will give us log R and integration of this minus k dt will give us minus kt plus i, the integration constant. Now, here, if p is equal to zero, if the time is zero, then kt becomes zero and the initial and final concentrations becomes equal. So look R will be equal to look R not the final concentration and the initial concentration will be the same at time zero. So putting this in this equation, we will get look in place of R, we will get, write R not equal to minus kT which has become zero plus I Therefore, I becomes equal to log R naught. Then putting the value of I, if this is equation one, we put the value of I in this equation one, then we will get log R equal to minus kT plus I, which is equal to look r not. Now, as before, this equation is similar to the equation of a straight line, which is y equal to mc plus x. So, if we plot this look r against the time, then we will get a straight line once again, and the slope of this line will be equal to minus k, and the intercept here will be equal to log r naught. Now, again, here we have log r equal to minus kt plus log r naught. On rearranging this, we will get kt equal to log r naught minus look r. Therefore, kt will be equal to log r naught by r. This can be written in this form. Now, converting this to base then log, we can write kt equal to 2.303 log r naught by r. Remember, this represents the initial concentration of the reactants, this is the final concentration. So, 
this is one form of the integrated form of a first order reaction, integrated rate equation for a first order reaction. Now using these equations, we can calculate the rate constant K, we can calculate the time also, if we know the initial and final concentrations of the reactant. Now once again, half-life period is the time in which the concentration of the reactants become half or half of the reaction is completed. So if we want to calculate the half-life period for a first order reaction, we can use this equation again. From here, we can write T equal to 2.303 by K look of the initial by final concentration. Half-life will be written as T1 by 2, and this will be equal to 2.303 by K log of the initial concentration R0 by the final concentration. Now, in half-life, the concentration is reduced to half. So, the final concentration will be half of the initial concentration. So, in place of R, we can write half of R0. Then, we got this we will get half-life period equal to 2.303 by K log 2. So the half-life period of the first order reaction will be equal to 2.303 by K, the rate constant, into log 2, whose value is 0 0.3010. So if we multiply this 2, we will get 0 0.693 and here we have the rate constant K. So the half-life period of a first order reaction can be easily calculated by using this equation. Now let us use this integrated equations to solve some problems which are given here. The first question is the initial concentration of N2O5 in the following first order reaction was 1.24 in the 10 to the power minus 2 mole per liter at 318 Kelvin. Concentration after 60 minutes was 0.20 in the 10 to the power minus 2 mole per liter. Calculate the rate constant at the same temperature 318 Kelvin. Value of look 6.2 is given, it's 0.7923. So from the integrated rate equation for a first order reaction, we can write K, the rate constant equal to 2.303 by T, the time, log of the initial by final concentration. So we get 2.303 by time, the time taken is 60 minutes, log of the initial concentration. The initial concentration was 1.24 into 10 to the power minus 2 mole per liter. And the, the final concentration after 60 minutes was 0 0.20 into 10 to the power minus 2 mole per liter. So we can cut this. Then we get 2.303 by 60 minute in the look, this we can cut, then this will give us 124 by 20. That will give us 6.2. Value of six, log 6.2 is given, so 2.303 by 60 into log 6.2, which is 0 0.7923. So we multiply this to the numerator and divide by 60 and the unit will be in per minute. So this should give us around 0 0.0304 per minute. Now the second question is the rate constant for a first order reaction is 60 per second. How much time will it take to reduce the initial concentration of the reactant to 1 by 6th of its initial value? 
So for the first order reaction, we have this K equal to 2.303 by T log of initial by final concentration. Since we are asked to calculate the time taken, we will bring time up here. It will be equal to 2.303 by K log of the initial by final concentration. This gives us 2.303 by K. The rate constant is 60 per sec second. Log of the initial concentration. Let us just write R naught. How much time will it take to reduce the initial concentration of the reactant to 1 by 16th of its value? So the final concentration should be 1 by 16th of the initial concentration, that is R naught. So here we can cut this R naught in R naught, then we will get 2.303 by 60 per second log 16. 2.303 by 60 per second into log 16 whose value is 1.204. So once again we multiply this numerators divide by the denominator. This should give us around 4.6 into 10 to the power minus 2 and the unit will be in seconds. Now in the same way we can calculate the half-life for this uh, first order reactions. Let us see one example. Calculate the half-life of a first order reaction. If its rate constant is given, the rate constant is 200 per second. So from the equation we derived, the half-life period of a first order reaction is equal to 0.693 divided by the rate constant k. So we directly divide this 0.693 by the rate constant that is 200 per second. Point six nine three divided by two hundred should give us around three point forty seven into ten to the power minus three, and the unit will be in seconds. Now, another question: time required to decompose. Thionyl chloride to half of its initial amount. The time required to decompose thionyl chloride to half of its initial amount is 60 minutes. If the decomposition is a first order reaction, then calculate the rate constant. So once again, half-life period for a first order reaction is given by 0.693 divided by the rate constant k. So k will be equal to 0.693 divided by the half-life, that is p1 by 2. So 0 0.693 divided by the half-life, which is 60 minutes. So 0 0.693 divided by 60 should give us 0 0.01155 and minute will be written as per minute if it comes up here. So if we write this in standard form, then we will write it as 1.155 into 10 to the power minus 2 since this decimal moves two places to the right side.
this will be the rate constant of the reaction. Now, so far, we have been discussing about the effect of concentration of reactants on the rate of a reaction. Temperature is another factor that affects the rate of a reaction. Now, for most of the reactions, it is found that with increase in temperature, the rate of the reaction increases. And uh, for many reactions, it is found that if the temperature is increased two times or doubled, or by, sorry, if the temperature is increased by around 10 degrees centigrade, then the rate of reaction becomes doubled. So suppose the rate of a reaction was 20 per second. If the temperature of this reaction is increased by 10 degrees centigrade, then this rate becomes doubled, so it becomes 40 per second. So with every 10 degree rise in temperature, the rate of the reaction becomes almost doubled or sometimes even tripled. So temperature is one very important factor that affect the rate of a reaction. And another factor that affects rate of reaction is the presence of a catalyst. Now, a catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of reaction without itself undergoing any change during the course of the reaction. So it just enhances the rate of the reaction but does not undergo any changes on itself. So a catalyst is a substance that enhances the rate of a reaction. So from the definition itself, we will understand that if we use a catalyst, the rate of the reaction will be increased. Now there are some points to remember regarding this effect of catalyst on the rate of a reaction. Let us see those points. The first point is that a catalyst catalyzes the spontaneous reaction but does not catalyze non-spontaneous reactions. In other words, we can understand it like this. A catalyst can enhance the rate of a reaction. A reaction that is going on, its rate can be enhanced by the use of a catalyst. But if the reaction is non-spontaneous, the use of a catalyst will not start the reaction. That means the catalyst can only enhance the rate of the reaction but it will not be able to start the reaction. That is the first point. And the second point is that a catalyst helps in attaining equilibri equilibrium faster, but does not change the equilibrium constant of a reaction. The equilibrium constant is written as K. The catalyst, it will help in attaining the equilibrium faster, but it will not affect value of K, the equilibrium constant. That is the second point. And the third point is that the catalyst catalyzes the forward as well as backward reactions to the same extent. So if we have a reaction in which A turns into product, and if the reaction is reversible, that means P can also give back the reactant A. In such kind of reactions, use of a catalyst will enhance the rate of the forward reaction as well as the backward reaction to the same extent. So from here also we understand that the catalyst will not affect the value of the equilibrium constant K. And the very important point to remember about the effect of this catalyst on the rate of reaction is that a catalyst enhanced, enhances the rate of the reaction by providing an alternative but in alternative way with lower activation energy for the reaction to occur. So once it provides an alternative path with lower activation energy, the rate of the reaction will be enhanced because if activation energy is high, rate of reaction is slow. If activation energy is low, rate of reaction is high. So catalyst, they enhance the rate of reactions by providing alternative paths with lower activation energy for the reaction to take place. That is all for today. Thank you so much.